everybody, welcome to our next section on identity formation, dealing with our chapter 11 unit on adolescence. Today we're going to learn specifically about the different stages of ident identity formation and how us as teenagers, you as teenagers, kind of go through this cycle of trying to understand who you are, uh, where you're going, and where you're going, going to be uh, finishing up, hopefully, as far as understanding who you are. So make sure, as usual, that we have our notebook paper out and ready to be taking notes. Always remember there's more information on here than just what you see on the screen. Also, please make sure you get your directions put away. We don't want those things messing up with us being successful today. And as always, if you have any questions, please make sure that you put them down in the box below, the comment box below, and I'll be sure to get back to those comments or questions if you have any. And with that, let's get some learning. So. Again, we got our terms. There's a number of terms that we have for this particular session. Uh, so let's take a look here. Our first term is identity crisis. This is when a person is examining what his or her values are and what changes need to be made about life roles. Okay, you're, you're figuring out that things are changing in your body and you don't know exactly how to handle that. And psychologists call this the time period of your identity crisis, trying to figure out who you are, what you stand for, and where you want to go with it, if you can even figure that out right away. Identity status is the patterns and processes by which adolescents handle and cope with their identity crisis. So there are four, like I said, four processes or four statuses that psychologists kind of put people into to kind of see where exactly they are on the spectrum as far as what their identity is, understanding where they are, um, so on and so forth. So we'll get more into that. Uh, one of those four statuses is known as identity moratorium, which is the delaying or making on making commitments about important decisions. We'll talk about those. Identity foreclosure is when you are making commitments that shut out any other type of possible possibilities or any other types of plans that are available to you in the future as far as your personality um, or the type of person you are. You are set in one way and nothing's going to change that. That's identity foreclosure. Identity diffusion is that you are still in a constant search for the meaning of life and your identity. Um, you have not committed yet. You're still searching, trying to figure things out. You got all these different options that are available to you. You realize that, but you haven't made a choice yet. You're still working on that. And then finally, we have identity achievement, where you have coped, explored, and decided about the important questions of life and about yourself. You're finally there. You have figured out who you are, what you're about, and the type of person you want to be going forward. All right. So for this section, our main idea is that one of the main tasks of adolescence is that search for identity, trying to figure out who we are as we go through this process of adolescence. So we're going to talk about um, these tasks, these four tasks, and trying to figure out a sense of who we are and what we stand for. So as I mentioned before, there are four stages or categories that adolescents tend to identify with. We call those identity status, which are those four areas you're, you're currently in. And we're also going to look at, at the end, um, the issues of gender and how those can play a role, as well as ethnicity, and how those can play a role in the formation of our identity. Uh, how our gender, male or female, or our, our race or ethnicity kind of plays a role in that also as far as um, traditions and things like that and expectations within our, our gender or our, um, our ethnicity. So let's get going here. So there's a section in our book on page 315 of the uh, Holt uh, book on psychology that talks about turning our life around. So if you haven't done so yet, feel free to read it. Um, I can't put a link on here because it is copyrighted, but for those of you that have the book, the psychology or the principles in psychology, uh, feel free to take a look. It's on page 315. And then see if you can figure out how does one, this one young man's experiences have a positive impact on his identity. Okay, think about that for a minute. Pause the video and we'll come back in a second. All right, 
So, you read this section, and you can see this guy, Tyrone Flowers. He was met with an unfortunate incident, which left him paralyzed and in a wheelchair. And a lot of people kind of would take this incident and just kind of have to settle with it. Um, but he chose to take a different route. He said, this wheelchair is not going to define me. Uh, I'm going to define myself. I am who I am, and this wheelchair is, is a part of me. So he was able to make... Uh, an unfortunate situation into something much better for himself. He wasn't going to let this thing control him. He was going to control it. So he turned himself around and he made decisions to help him on his way to become probably more successful than he would have been had he made a different decision. And that's kind of what we're looking at here. That's trying to figure out what choices are available to us and how those affect us in the future. So, Let's get through some of this wordy stuff right away, okay? Uh, there's a psychologist, adolescent psychologist. His name's Eric Erickson. You might have heard of him. He maintained that the main task of adolescent stages is the search for identity. So this whole time period between the ages of about 10 and about 21 is trying to figure out who you are, trying to figure out first where you started as far as, for example, as a ch in childhood. And now you're grown up. You've got these choices. You're conscious of yourself, but you're not exactly sure where you're going with that yet to figure out exactly what that means. She so says a lot of adolescence is that search for identity. Who am I and where am I going? Erickson believed that the task is accomplished by choosing and developing a commitment to a particular role, uh, role or occupation in life. Trying to find out where your niche is, get that commitment, and then go with it. Okay, and it's trying to find that comfort zone to figure out who you are, who you feel best represents you, and then taking that and using it to your advantage, whether it's in your job, in your friendship, things like that. Adolescents during this time period may experiment with their different values and beliefs and roles and relationships. Sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. But as we all know, a lot of times we learn to be successful through the mistakes we've made. And adolescence is definitely the playground for that. You learn, you find out who you are through your friends, through your family, through your peers, and figure out where you fit in all this world. That not, Since now you have a choice to make to figure out who you are. And you experiment with that. And that's normal. And that's how it's supposed to be. Adolescence achievement. Um, sorry, adolescence identity is achieved when... Uh, different selves are brought together into a unified sense of self. So you are you, your friends are them, you are unique to them, and they're unique to themselves. But there's not nothing to say that you can't have similarities, okay, or commonalities that are amongst you. Um, you might hang out with this group of people and find out, hey, I don't like everything about them, but I'm going to take one piece. I'm going to hang out with this other group, and you know what? I like that piece. I'm going to take that piece. And then once you're all figured out, once you get to that identity achievement phase, as we'll talk about, you get this new idea of accomplishment. This, this is who I am. This is who I'm happy with. And you're good to go. Before you can get to that identity achievement phase is that whole identity crisis, okay? which is what a lot of adolescents are going through at the beginning of their adolescence. Um, as they're kind of pulling away from mom and dad is this idea of trying to figure out who I am because I don't know who I am. Okay, so that's all part of this process. Identity crisis is a turning point in a person's development when the person examines his or her values and makes those changes about who they are and what their life roles uh, will be. Kind of what we've been talking about. So, real quick, kind of a recall question here. According to Erickson, what is the main task of adolescent stage development? Well, finding that identity, that search for who we are, the search for ourselves, as far as who we are, what we stand for, uh, what we represent, and the kind of person we want to be growing up and growing forward into uh, adulthood. So, let's take a look at identity status and the four different parts of that. First, we have the term, which we've already seen, identity moratorium, where adolescents are exploring this identity status, known as identity moratorium, but they're delaying their commitments about these questions. They don't, want, they don't know what to do yet. They don't know what direction they want to go, um, 
so they kind of are just in a lull. They're just kind of sitting back, staying where they are right now, and not really trying to move out of that comfort zone. Okay, a lot of times this happens when people are just indecis indecisive about all their choices. Okay, they, so they choose not to make a choice, or not to even look at the choices. Okay, they put a moratorium, a pause, before trying to figure out some of this stuff. This is normal. Okay, people are scared about change, but unfortunately, like it or not, we are going to change. And eventually, adolescents do move out of this identity moratorium onto uh, these other stages. Sometimes more than one stage, sometimes not so much. Sometimes only one or two of these stages. Next, identity foreclosure. To avoid an identity crisis, adolescents in the identity foreclosure category make a commitment that forecloses or shuts out other possibilities. A common thing like this is something my son's actually kind of going through right now. He says at 14, I'm either going to be an engineer or I'm going to be in the military. That's it. That's th Those are my choices. Well, he's only 14. Okay, so he's kind of shutting himself out to all the other possibilities. But he hasn't had a lot of experience either with some of these other possibilities. So that is a good example of the, the foreclosure status. Uh, limiting yourself to these possibilities is one or two possibilities and that's it. Don't get yourself kind of put into this situation, okay? Don't get into this idea where your parents are saying, hey, you're going to do this, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor, whatever. You might not be that kind of person, but don't get shut out into this identity foreclosure. It's a good place to be sometimes as far as focusing on what you want to do, but also be aware that there are other options, which is where identity foreclosure is different than the next one, identity diffusion. So, identity diffusion. Adolescents in this stage seem to be constantly searching for the meaning of life, where they belong, um, the fact that they haven't committed yet, um, because they're still searching for themselves, trying to find out what their personal beliefs are, um, what their uh, occupational path is going to be, where they're going to be going with their future. Again, this is a completely normal stage. A lot of college students are even going through this. If they're going changing from one college major to another major, completely normal, and it's not a problem. But again, it gets more and more difficult as far as the choices we get, the older and older we get, and the pressures that parents and friends and society put on us. Okay, so some kids and their teenagers, like myself, I knew I was going to be a teacher. I just felt comfortable with that. I had found that within myself. Okay, not that it was a foreclosure. I thought about technology. I thought about uh, engineering and math. And I realized that, hey, those weren't for me. I kept looking, but I eventually found where I wanted to be through that process of identity diffusion. Looking at my options, comparing, contrasting how I feel about myself, how I could see myself in the future. And eventually I was able to get to this state of identity achievement. Okay, where I've looked at my options, I've considered everything, I've gone through the process, I've coped, and I'm committed. I know where I want to go, and I'm happy, and I'm comfortable, and I'm glad I'm going that way. Okay, it's a good way to set goals once you find that identity achievement, because you know this is the niche I want to do, this is where I'm comfortable at, I'm looking forward to doing this. Okay, and, and now you can set your goals on how you're going to get there if you haven't already been there. Okay, so... Identity achievement is kind of the end role, the, the end place of where you want to end up once you're finding and, and learning about more on yourself and who you are and where you want to be. Now we're going to throw another little mix into it, okay? Our gender and ethnicity, okay, and how that plays a role as far as the type of person we are. So, gender and uh, with identity formation. Research shows that female adolescents are now more apt to approach identity formation like male adolescents. Okay, Female adolescents do, however, express more concern about the challenges of balancing work life and family life. If you go back, not even that far uh, back in history, 30, 40, 50 years, women's roles were kind of predetermined by society's expectations of them. Nursing, teachers, housewife things like that, okay? Well now, with the changing times, technology, all that stuff, women are more willing to put themselves out there more, more apt to approach and, ch and change those types of identity 
um, statuses that are, uh, find their identity differently, or more like men rather, than they used to. Okay, now there's more opportunities, more things, astronauts, scientists, things like that. Um, almost to the same opportunities men have, um, which is awesome. However, study also shows that they tend to be also still concerned about balancing this new opportunity, these new lives, these new situations, and finding a time to balance that with family life. That is why we're seeing a lot of women not marrying as soon as they used to, say 40, 50 years ago. Okay, women and men tend to be marrying later in life. Some women are, are certainly comfortable not marrying at all, where before women, it was kind of expected in order to survive economically, they needed a man. Well, now that's changing. So a lot of women are saying, you know what, my career needs to take off before I start a family. And that's a choice, conscious choice that is made. Okay, but the point is, women now have more identity opportunities than they kind of had before, which is an awesome thing. Ethnicity formation is often more complicated for adolescents, particularly from ethnic minority groups. Okay, there's a lot of prejudice and discrimination that comes into play with this also. A lot of times, depending on race and ethnicity, you have certain sets of expectations that your culture puts upon you. Uh, girls expecting to mature at a certain age. Boys expecting to be considered men uh, by the age of 13 or 14 or whatever the case may be. Uh, being expected to uh, have arranged marriages and, and certain social statuses. Um, so there's a lot of pressure uh, among a lot of different ethnic groups. Even today, whether it's in the United States or even outside the United States. So that certainly plays a role as far as forming an identity. Um, it can cause more stress, more strain on the parent-child uh, relationship. Um, parents are telling their kids what they're going to be doing instead of the kid having the opportunity to decide and find out for themselves. So identity formation within uh, minority ethnic groups is a little different. Okay, And it's important to understand and realize that when we're talking to different racial groups or uh, comparing um, American or Western civilization types of, of identity formation to that of other cultures. So, let's compare and contrast. For which group of adolescents is identity formation especially complicated? Okay, Ethnic minority groups, as we just kind of talked about. It's a little bit more complicated. It's not just boy and girl. It's also as far as relationships like family, friends, society goes. Uh, much more complicated, much more things that are going into play there um, that make things certainly more complicated for a lot of ethnic minority groups. cultural diversity, all right? A term you might have heard of is rites of passage, okay? And it's, it's kind of a sub-area of our idea of identity. We kind of figure out our identity also by age. And a lot of cultures, they predetermine the type, I don't say predetermine, but these, are, these rites of passages are times where a person is marked throughout their life as being at a certain stage. Okay, so on the screen we see a rite of passage marks when a person's entrance into a new stage of life. These ceremonies include baptisms, graduations, marriages, um, or religious holidays, or religious ceremonies, as we'll talk about. For many people around the world, various rites of passages, such as school graduations and weddings, signify the end of one period of life and the beginning of others. And believe it or not, a lot of Western civilizations, particularly in the U.S., also have specific and identifiable rites of passage. For a lot of Americans, uh, we see the separation stage, a uh, transitional stage, and a complete, completion stage of these rites of passages. Um, and again, these typically happen as your age gets older and progresses. So for example, some of these rites of passages, graduation from high school or even grade school, uh, going to prom, your first date, uh, marriage, uh, things like that, um, these these next life steps that we go through, uh, being able to drive your car at 16, uh, being able to have a beer at 21, uh, getting married, okay? All of those things are considered rites of passage, which are like the next step in life. Um, and those are parts of the stages of development as far as our identity goes. 
Similarly, other cultures we see also have different types of rites of passage that are particularly important to them. Um, for example, there's Jewish, uh, sorry, uh, Hispanic girls. They go through the rite of passage known as the quince, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, quincenari, okay, the passage of Hispanic girls to becoming women. Um, Jewish boys typically enter adulthood through their bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. Um, ancient rite of passages in Japan, um, the, the paying song uh, in Miramar and Thailand, passage of the Shan people. So there's all these different ceremonies, rites of passages, uh, recognizing one step of life, moving out of one into another. Here we see a young man going through his bar mitzvah, reading the Torah, which is written in Hebrew, uh, kind of a requirement to go through that. And here we see a Hispanic young lady going through her rite of passage of becoming a young uh, girl into a woman. Ceremony, tradition, parties, going all that fun stuff, right? Fifteenth birthday marks the typical traditional Hispanic girl as going into adulthood. Obviously, the United States, um, Western civilization, it's a little, a little bit different. But again, this is a, a traditional, family, ethnical type of rite uh, right of passage. So, thinking critically, a couple questions here to think about. Besides the examples mentioned above, or previously, what are some other rites of passage that adolescents might experience in the United States? And do these rites of passage help us in order to better identify ourselves as far as identity formation? Do these rites of, passage, rites of passages influence the identity formation that we are working on? So think about that for a second. All right. In summary for today's lesson, we looked at finding your identity is a significant step in adolescence on the way to childhood. So it's a stepping stones from, from become a child to a man or a woman. Most teenagers are in a state of identity crisis. Some delaying their forming of identities. Others continue to search for it and eventually achieve it through exploration. Gender and ethnicity play a role in creating our identity. And families and close friends, as well as society, also play a role in helping an individual determine who their identity are. All right, there we have it. Another great lecture on our psychology materials. First of all, I want to thank uh, Holt Reinhardt for providing with uh, much of the notes that we looked at on our uh, lecture here today. Also, I'd like to thank all these other great people that are over my shoulder. As always, please make sure that you do have uh, comments. Please put them in the box below and I will get back to you as soon as humanly possible. And with that, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And always remember, keep on learning. Have a great day.